If I was to order a day uh, that I would like, I couldn't order this day. I wouldn't get it because it's 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 just marvelous. Life Over 60, welcome. Thank you for joining me again. And I know all of you who are my subscribers know my husband, Arthur. You've asked for another interview. And I thought it might be kind of appropriate because Arthur and I are going to be celebrating an anniversary on February the 17th. And we're going to be married 34 years. So I thought it might be kind of interesting to ask him a few questions about relationships, about his life, and we'll see how it goes. All right, Arthur. Yes. You got married when you were 57. Everybody knows that. And we've been married for 34 years. Um, have you finally settled into marriage after all these years? <laughs> I, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, uh, after all these years, uh, uh, I don't know where the years uh, went or something, 34 years, uh, it's just like a poop, just like that. And uh, uh, especially when you're having a good time. And if you're having a good time <laughs> and you enjoy your life, uh, it even goes faster. Okay, this year, 2019, yeah. or 18, 2019, um, what do you think has been the highlight of our relationship this year? The highlight of our relationship. There's so many highlights. Uh, it's too numerous to mention. We're both still alive. So, That's uh, good. <laughs> you know. So, but uh, we've uh, we've had a lot of highlights. You know, and uh, uh, just to be around and uh, just to be alive. You know, at 92 is a very major major highlight. All right, I'm going to ask you a really hard question because you have to think back. Uh, 35 plus six years, 41 years ago, we met. Um, what was your very first memory of me when we met? I, uh, I never had seen uh, such a beautiful woman, intelligent, uh, with beautiful hair, and, uh, uh, you know, she, was, she had all, all the things, all the things that people look at and want. And here I am, I ended up with her. And you know what? I'm wearing my pink hair today because he likes it. Yeah. I wasn't too sure he liked it. I wore it and it came downstairs. He didn't say anything. So I thought, oh, okay. So I washed it out. And then he said, what happened to your beautiful pink hair? Yeah. So I put it back in today just for this occasion. Yeah, I think it's very nice. But yeah. you know, I have a memory, and I don't know whether I want to share this on YouTube or not, but uh, when I first met Arthur, uh, we went to a convention show uh, he had business there, and so did I, different kind of things that we had to do. And he took me home back to his office, um, where I was going to be my friend, on the subway. Now, I had never been on a subway in years since I was living at the Barbizon Hotel for Women. And all of a sudden, this stranger, this man that I had only known for a couple of hours, turned to me and he said, would you be my mistress? <laughs> and I looked at him and I thought, how can I get off of this subway? <laughs> Is that you, crazy? You, you did, you a, said that. I didn't uh, say, yes, they, you did. I think you're hallucinating. Yeah, I didn't you, say, <laughs> what am I gonna say something when you be my mistress on a train you going to my apartment? But I swear to heaven yeah, you said gosh. that. So anyway, we went back and he yeah. asked me out for a drink yeah. and I had to get back home right. to my children. So I left and I thought, I'm never gonna see that guy again, ever. Yeah. And look, yeah. 41 years uh, later. Unbelievable, <laughs> uh, where, where, where did I go wrong? What happened to me? Okay. What is the one thing you appreciate about me? But I'm going to start first. What I appreciate about you. You're a good provider. You're very kind. You're kind to the animals. Um, 
you have been my best cheerleader through all of my career days with you. Uh, you could have been my PR person because you were always promoting me and saying great things about me and pumping me up and everybody needs that. So you should have been an agent. You're really very, very good at promoting things. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so what is the one thing about me that you appreciate? Be nice. One thing <laughs> about you that I appreciate, yeah. your independence. You're independent and you are a your own contractor. You do your own thing and what you want to do, uh, you can do it any time and you behold to no one. And I don't yourself. smother you, right? Yeah, and uh, sometimes just smother me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, okay. If you could... Excuse me. Yes. There's a little, there's a little uh, tree that is growing, uh, you know, it just came from a seed or something like that. There's one little bead, bee that comes, you see him, uh, that yeah. little bee? Yeah. It's right on that it's uh, little... Yeah. A Very branch, pretty. and and the bee is smaller than usually the bumblebees, and uh, I well, only see one bee. or two bees that bee. come here. Really, yeah, that's a, well, it's a wonderful bee. bee. All right, now, if you could store up only one hour's worth of memory in your mind, which hour of our marriage or our lives together would you want to remember? The trip around the world. Which one? Uh, all of them. <laughs> okay. No, that's that's. Yeah. Yeah, trip that around the nice. world. Yeah. Uh, we've been uh, very lucky. Yeah. Yeah, we've done things and been places that, uh, you know, uh, that people don't do, ever, in any lifetime. We've had so, some great adventures. Great, great adventures. Especially right. in India, when we right. had the cab driver who right. took us through Mumbai, and we went into the all the darkest places and to yeah. the, yeah. to the, the slums mm -hmm. and up to. Percy, but uh, I, I uh, this was a return voyage for me. I was in India in 1944. Uh, during the and war. During the war, Second World War, I went to the gateway of India and so forth. So here, 50 years later, you know, I'm out in India. You know, now that you're 92 and you have time on your hands, when you sit and think during the day, what do you think about? I mean, what is the, do you have a one main thought of things? Do you think about your past? Do you think about the future? Do you think about what you're going to eat tonight? That's yeah, probably what uh, yeah. does. I think about the, all the paperwork that I have to do. Uh, <laughs> and it just piles up there. And all the magazines that, that I subscribe to, that I love to read and I'm not reading. And uh, all these other things that uh, are, all, I'm, I'm surrounded by all these things. And what to do first, you know, you name it. But you know, one thing I have noticed about you at your age, they say people, as they get older, they lose their appetite, but you really have a healthy appetite. I have a, I have a very good appetite kitchen. for my own food. I cook <laughs> my own food and I like what I cook. And above all, my number one, uh, my number one, uh, you know, to eat or something is Sandra's soups. She makes soups that are unbelievable. And I always look forward to her soups, and I could live a week on her soups. But unfortunately, we eat it up in one or two days. Yeah, I'll be making soup. I'll go upstairs to write or do into my little office where all my creative stuff is done. <clears throat> and the soup will be cooking. And by the time I come down, it's finished. And Arthur will have had about five bowls or six bowls of soup before I can I know, even I don't have know one. what she does or how she does it. But uh, and half it, the pot is gone. Yeah, it's just marvelous. And uh, I'm now I'm waiting for the new soup. I bought all the stuff. She has everything uh, more to make a soup. And she says she'll make it today or tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, I probably tomorrow. will. And uh, I'm now, looking forward to it. The next, the next question is, if you could write, and think about this, if you could write a song about your life, what, what, what kind of, what type of music would you use? The big band music, you know, because it, it flowed and it just went on and on. The big band music to me, uh, you know, is memory. I love the big band music too, even though I was, in the 40s, I was really, really young, but every morning we come up here to the garden and uh, I have a tap, an Amazon tap that is, you know, cordless 
So I turn on and I ask Alexa to play the big band music and we have our coffee up here mm -hmm. listening to all the big band mm -hmm. standards. It's very romantic and, and, nice. and I like also that. we have a uh, two little dogs that come up here right, to keep right. us company. Right. Sophie and Sophie and look, look at our other dog Pesto just laying under the chair, laying under the chair sleeping. All right. If you were Aladdin or if I were and I could if I were Aladdin and I could give you three wishes do you have three wishes left yet in your bucket list that you wish could no, come true I, while uh, you're here? I, you know, I, uh, well, three wishes right now, contemporary, you know. It's uh, Emerson's album, you know, right. uh, 32,000 Days, which he has completed. And he has taken my uh, painting and he's put it on the cover. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is ready to get, you know, to release it. Uh, when he finalizes some, uh, you know, some uh, public relations and some things that he has to finalize before he gets out. I think that album will be sensational. Well, that's one thing. Do you know that he's going to be with Bon Jovi? He and Bon Jovi are doing a cruise from here in April. So he'll be down here in April. We'll good, to see. good, good. So this, that's one. Do you have another wish? Well, uh, the next wish is the cruise. The cruise. I'd like to go on a cruise again around the world, and uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, go before I expire. And if I expire uh, on the ship, they could bury me at sea, and I would be happy. <laughs> what about, what about maybe adding ten more years? Do you think a hundred and three would be no, good? It's it, it's not it's not in the cards. Well, I'll tell you, know. you know, there's a, there's a reason why I, I'm living this long. You know, all my friends are dead, five, ten years already. And uh, there's a reason, and I believe that the reason is that, you know, Sandra became a vegetarian many years ago, and I followed suit. And uh, although we eat a little fish, uh, it's, uh, we don't eat any meat or chicken or anything like that. And uh, I think that was very helpful. I try and stay away as, from all types of pills, unless prescribed by a doctor. I don't take any aspirin or any, anything like that. Uh, I think a number one uh, longevity for me is fidgeting. I'm oh always my gosh. fidgeting. That's so true. I'm never still. No matter what I do, even when I lie down, I'm fidgeting. But that's you know, going to shorten my life because well, well, it drives me crazy. Yeah, I, I, there's nothing I could do. I can't help it. In my life right now, I'm fidgeting. Yeah, you're moving. And uh, uh, I asked the doctor why I'm fidgeting. He says some people fidget, and he says to tell you the truth, uh, that's that's an area for longevity. You're going to live long because you fidget. Oh, that you have that. That's in your head. No, you no, 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 no. Really. Instead of sitting down. In, in on a couch and become a couch potato, you're a fidgeter. Yeah, and true. Uh, it, it's true, I'm a fidgeter. Yeah. Now, if you could go back in time and be any age you wanted to be and say start all over again, do you have any age that you would like to be so that you could do a rerun yeah, on a this rerun, life? I guess, uh, you know, start all over again, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe uh, 16. You know, 16 yeah. to be able to look in, in the future and do the things that I wanted, I should have done and I, I didn't do. Maybe you would have been a big actor. I could have probably been a big, big actor, you know. So. This guy pounded the desk, this producer, and said, I'm giving you an opportunity that you can nobody ever has this opportunity. Well, you were like a tab hunter type, and that was very... No, very... I was better than tab well, hunter. Well, you are better looking. I was, <laughs> I was really... I really had it, had you know. I had the, I had, the, I had, the, I really had it, but uh, I didn't think I wanted to become an actor, you know. And uh, uh, I, uh, it, it was one of the things that I, I really uh, missed that I should have done. All right, now, because we are both charitable people, we're kind people. What, as a couple, do you think you and I could do in this life to make things better? Well, there's a lot of things, you know. I look at all, every time I put an ad in, they got St. Jude, they got uh, people begging for Shriners money and doing hospital. this. And, uh, it, it, it's awful. They show these people, and they show this kid who's about 15, 16 years old, and he says, you could have this adorable blanket. 
he doesn't use the word adorable, so they put, you know, words in his mouth. I would like to help all those type of people, all those people. But what and about Arthur? Every day Arthur goes out. When he walks the dogs or when he walks his dog, he has his pockets filled with peanuts and bird seed. So I think you could be a Francis. Yes, yes, I think so. I, uh, uh, the birds look forward to me, uh, to see me. They, they come do. off the trees, they're pigeons and the sparrows and so forth. And the uh, squirrels look forward to seeing me also. So I go out and uh, I go to Publix and I buy uh, three or four pound bags of peanuts and uh, it doesn't last long and I buy 20 pounds of seed uh, you know and I feed the you know the bird usually to feed the birds and uh, anything else you know when it comes back uh, to when I was a kid uh, my mother used to feed all the stray cats and that emanated her feelings into me to do what I have I'm doing today but my mother was a very kind person and she was always giving, you know. But you do love animals. I love animals, are. you know, I don't kill anything. Do you have any interesting story you want to tell us about uh, your, your, while you had a childhood or You know, the unfortunate up? thing is, uh, for me, is I have about, the fortunate thing is, I have maybe 100,000 pictures that I've taken uh, for the 50 or 60 years. I have albums. Uh, that are full of pictures. Mm -hmm. And I have movies, you know, that I have taken uh, that, that are tremendous. I always uh, put it away and I said, one day I'm going to sit by the fire in a, in, a, in, a, in a storm and the weather be atrocious and terrible and I'll take out all these albums and all these pictures and I'll look at them. And I'll really relish the thought that I had taken all these pictures. And unfortunately, I have never done it. You know, it, uh, you know I, I look at pictures and, uh, you know, it means something to me. And I look at pictures and some people I look at, uh, I said, who the heck are they? You know, it's a, unfortunate. But I, uh, uh, when I go back to New York, I'm going to make an effort to look at the albums and look at the pictures. You know, I was thinking of an exciting moment uh, since you and I have been married together. And uh, remember, we used to go to the April and Paris Ball oh, every time. It was yeah. so nice. All the celebrities were there, and it was just a lot of fun. But there was always a raffle, and they would raffle off high-end things. I mean, we would get this gift box. It's like the Academy Award. You'd have everything in it from high-end Tiffany's to the best uh, cognac. Just Unbelievable. everything. Cosmetics, Unbelievable. Cosmetics, everything. Uh, Great basket. big box. But anyway, so Arthur always participated in the raffle. And at one April in Paris Ball, we were sitting there, and they were raffling off a brand new Mercedes. No, I bought and, two tickets, $100 each. Yeah, and I, guess I who it. won? He did. I had this this uh, <laughs> this uh, friend of mine coming in, uh, running into the ball, you know, where I was. I was by the card game or something, like, running in. And I said, hey! Hey, she went crazy. You want the Mercedes? I said, you know, I looked around. And I said, what was this lunatic coming in this fear? I mean, this uh, uh, this yeah. woman. And sure enough, I won this uh, Mercedes. You won the Mercedes, and they soon did. My mother and father, we had invited them to come with us, and we were all sitting there in our black tie and gowns. It was very opulent. And Arthur said, Oh, good. I'm going to give that to you. Guess what? <laughs> he never did. He kept it for himself. Yeah. But that's all right. You won it. You bought yeah, the tickets. It was, it was very nice, but I bought your car, right? Yeah, I bought you two did. cars and yeah. so forth. So. Yeah. All right. This is our anniversary issue. We will have been married for how many years? Uh, two, 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 two numbers. <laughs> I just said it earlier. Uh, 46, 44 years. Uh, oh, 30, 36 years. No. Uh, 30, close. Close, 34 years, but we've known each other. We dated for six years before, so we've had a 41 year relationship. So, happy anniversary. What wonderful thing is going to happen to me on my anniversary? It's, it's just marvelous to be sitting on top of 
our penthouse overlooking the whole ocean of Miami Beach and, uh, and uh, the, this oasis that we have right over here, uh, all these plants surrounded by, uh, yeah, it's amazing.